This is day three of our project in collaboration with the Mentor Project. And we're building an 8-bit computer on breadboards from scratch. Um, we're building this alongside the 7th and 8th grade students in Robison County. And we're having so much fun. We started last week um, and we did last Tuesday and Thursday. And so here we are again today. Um, Miss Robin, Miss Phyllis, Mr. Jesse's classes, thank you so much for learning this with us. And please keep the messages and questions coming in the chat as we are working and building this together today. Um, so my co-founder Jordan and our senior advisor Jess is back with us today um, and we're, we're super excited to get going. So Jess and Jordan, why don't y'all give a recap of what we started last week and what we're going to work on today. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to jump in. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Um, perfect. So we uh, last week went through and built up to uh, the first circuit on the board, which we tested and had a variable frequency clock that we saw the output signal of through the LED that Jenna tested at the end of Thursday's stream. Um, today, we're gonna go and start building a second circuit. You can see the first one that Jenna is putting in frame now. Um, that's the first one that she put together, the potentiometer, which is that blue uh, part on the top of the board. Uh, you can actually rotate the knob on that in order to get a variable frequency. You're actually changing the resistance of the potentiometer, which is changing the timing of the circuit that Jenna built. Uh, we're today going to start building a second circuit built on top of the 555 timer um, at the, the core of it that will be a manually controlled um, a clock that you'll be able to actually push a button and every time you push that button it manually cycles uh the clock as well awesome and that's actually for those following along in uh the written instructions we are at step i think we finished 1.7.1 1. uh, which was just disconnecting the power after that last test and i have that highlighted in the instructions for anyone and y'all hannah and Britt will post um there they are the instructions are in the chat and so just follow that link and also you can add us on Discord. And so if there are any questions that you have as we're doing this, um, or if you're doing this um, not in real time with us, feel free to ask any of the questions that you have to us on Discord. I'm just moving. We, we did put my parts in these little <laughs> containers so they're not in, in all of the different bags, but I'm just moving things around here on my desk. <laughs> all right, let's get started. All right, well, let's jump into the instructions. And we were at 1.7.1, .1, so disconnecting the power after the last test, we're going to go into 1.8, which is removing the test wire that uh, we added last time in order to hook this clock's output to um, the LED. So there's those two jumpers that go kind of cross country mm -hmm. there between uh, the 555 timers pin three and the LED input leg. We can remove uh, both of those. So, so those that's two these yellow, yellow ones? Wires. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. So with that, we're going to start building uh, clock two, which is the uh, the manually controlled timer. So looking at the instructions here, we're jumping to uh, 2.1 here. And with 2.1, uh, this is gonna look really similar to uh, the last clock we built with some minor changes. So the first step here is to get a 555 timer out of your uh, components bin. Uh, so that's the smaller of uh, the circuits. There should be two small ones that are identical there, there, which are the 555 timers. Got it. And do we just need one? We just need one. There yeah. we go. Oh, where's my? Awesome. I need my, um, I think on the last one I was showing you all the parts on top of this. Here we go. Awesome. All right. And where are we going with this one? This one, you're going to place it um, to the right of the other 555 timer. And as far as where exactly it's it's flexible, but maybe um, it, you know, so the the pins don't interfere with the potentiometer at all. So maybe like just to the right of where the potentiometer is, um, along the middle row, just like the other five 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 timer is. Okay. And you'll want to make sure the top is on the left, so where that notch is that's sticking off of the five 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 timer. Here. I mean, sorry, y'all. Okay. And so you're saying it has to be to the right of this one? Yeah. Oh, on the right. So it'd be 
If I'm looking at yeah. it this way, it's below. Below. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Jess, how's your day going? Good. How about you all? Good. It's been a busy Tuesday. I was like, oh my goodness. It feels like, feels like it's a Thursday or Friday. Sorry, y'all. I can't, uh, I actually cannot hold the, this timer with my tweezers, so I'm just gonna go in like, like this. How's that? Are we good, Justin Jordan? If you, if you could move it actually slightly further, maybe three or four further to the right, just so that the pins aren't uh, in the same rows as the potentiometer. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, I totally forgot about that. No, all good. I mean, I'm I did that too when I first built. I it was I was I, I was I looking at it when it was I was looking at it as though it was this way, and when you were saying to the right, I was like, where are we gonna put it? <laughs> no, all good. Here we go. You know, when I think about the board, I think kind of like right to left being the current direction and, and you know, the yeah, totally. ha half people think it's that way and half people the other way and both are totally. right. So, um, awesome. awesome. So that looks good there. So that is step 2.1.2, uh, uh, which is placing the timer on the board, uh, bridging the gap in the middle. That's perfect. Um, and now we're going to go through the same set of a power and ground that we did on uh, the first 555 timer. So you'll want to grab your uh, container of jumpers and grab a jumper that can connect pin eight to power. Pin eight so of pin... this new 555? Yeah, so that's the top uh, the top right uh, corner, or well, I guess in the yeah. current position, it's the top left corner yeah. there. Um, and then pin eight to power. So it looks like we used one of the green jumpers last time. You can awesome. see it in the, the top left corner yep. of the other timer. And Jordan, while I'm doing this, why don't um, I would love for you and Jess to both share maybe what advice you have for the next generation of engineers, builders, and dreamers. I'll let Jess take this one first. Man, that's hard. Um, I would say don't give up. Like uh, when the going gets rough, don't give up because it's worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. Jordan, now, now. Now you're on spot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no, mine's mostly to to learn skills that um, are looking to learn how to learn in, in a way. And, and maybe that's a weird thing to say, but the world of technology and industries are changing so quickly um, just with the rate of change in the world right now that it's helpful to always be kind of flexible and malleable and know that perhaps the skill set you're learning today is one that you need to transform into a new skill set in you know five years, ten years, twenty years, um, but to make sure that um, you always have like a secure place in the workplace by um, being able to be flexible in what you consider your strengths mm -hmm. um, and being able to learn those. Totally, I, I did. Y'all move the five the five 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 timer down by a row so that I wasn't interfering with anything over here. And that's that's good to see, and that that's part of like the trial and error of uh, building these circuits up. Is sometimes you'll you'll play stuff, and then you'll see if oh, it's actually better to put it in another position once you've tried it. And yeah, that's, uh, that's part of the learning process here. Here we go. Oh my goodness, y'all. Okay. Here we go. I was telling the students yesterday, I was like, oh my, it's, I don't know if it's nerves <laughs> or what, but sometimes my hands start to shake when I get really close down here. I think I'm like, oh, everybody's watching. I have to do it right. <laughs> All right, how's that? That's pin eight. And again, so it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then here's power over here. How's that? That looks really good. And uh, yeah, and uh, Jenna, it looks like one of your tasks from this weekend is also in the chat. What is? As well. Uh, one of your tech judges from this weekend. Oh, you, amazing. It's your tech museum judge, buddy. Wait, is this, is this Ken? Oh my goodness. Ken. 
So I had so much fun this weekend. I was a, a judge for the Tech Interactive um, for their um, tech challenge. And it was amazing. And um, I was able to judge alongside someone that I've admired for so long and have been thankful to get to know in the industry, Ken Washington. He's the CTO of Ford Motors and he is like just the, the prime example of, um, of you know, what we should all aspire to be like and um, insanely smart, <laughs> um, but also a genuine, awesome person. So I had so much fun. And Ken actually told me about the tech as well. And um, so we got to judge together. It was so much fun. I love that you're here, Ken. Awesome. Yay. Awesome, Ken, it's exciting you're, you're watching. So we'll, uh, we'll keep building and, and let us know how we're doing. But I know, I know, please don't judge. <laughs> Please don't judge my performance as my hands start shaking when I'm placing jumpers on the circuit board. All good. Well, let's, let's jump into pin one. Uh, this is step 2.1.4. Uh, we're going to connect pin one to ground. That's Alrighty. The, top, uh, the current position is kind of the top left, and that's, it'll be the same as what you did on uh, the first 555 timer. Alrighty. Connecting pin one to ground. Oh, y'all, I guess I should make sure it matches. I did the green and yellow, so I should do green and yellow again. Hey. Awesome. I'm going to need to have some of these loosen out on my desk. All right, y'all. So we are connecting. Oh, pin one to ground. Okay, sorry. I was reading what was highlighted on the um, instructions. I was going, oh no, I'm a step behind. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Connecting pin one to ground. Here we go. How's this? Ah, oh no. I think, and it looks like the left end, it, I think ground is the left uh, column. Oh, you're right. There. Yeah. So on the, on the first one, we didn't do it. On the, on the first one, we connected to power. Um, it looks like the first one that pin is going, it's that green jumper on the Oh, top. I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, no, y'all. There's a lot, there's a lot of pins the going on, so no, no worries. Oh, well. A lot of pins. How's this? It's not going to match that. the top. Oh, well. There we go. How's that? That's perfect. And as these circuits get more and more complicated, it'll be harder to maintain, like, color coding and whatnot, I know. so don't I'm worry. I'm really trying. It's... It, it, it's, it, it, I tried the same for the first, like, you know, up to about this point, And then uh, I decided there was no way to maintain it <laughs> through the whole thing. Oh, my goodness. Um, so that's that's perfect. So you did, uh, that was 2.1.4. Yep. And now um, the instructions are actually going to slightly diverge from uh, the prior circuit. Okay. So um, these instructions are actually going to be different. Okay. So now you're going to have to find a resistor. This will be a million ohm resistor but for the highest resistance and so y'all if you're using the kit um we shouldn't cheat we need to use the color code chart but if you just happen to glance at this you just happen to see it um but again on the instructions if you scroll all the way to the bottom there is a resistor color code chart but i believe we are going to be looking for brown black green brown black green okay let's see while I am finding this, I would love to know, um, Jess and Jordan, what was your dream job when you were growing up? Um, this is really weird, but I wanted to be an anesthesiologist, no which way. is like super random. That's so random. How did that come about? I, know. I think because it had a lot to do with math. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's so interesting. Uh, what about you, Jordan? I was I was looking at my fifth grade yearbook the other day, um, and uh, there's the, I'm quoted in there for saying that I want to be an accountant when I grow uh, up, and I, I really have no idea what led me to that. But I think similarly to Jess's point on using you know math and numbers and and whatnot, but um, I, I never wanted to like go into business or like entrepreneurship as a as a kid. Um, so that accounting I think was purely out of liking you know doing things with numbers and but now he's in venture capital so that that works that's some that's yeah. somewhat related i think my my best understanding at the time of like applied ways of using math was just uh, like adding money and brit says she wanted to be a lawyer but then i heard you have no life 
my goodness. Oh, and Hannah wanted to be a dentist. Hannah, you want to be a dentist. Awesome. Also, well, that, that is looks this, right. Um, is this correct? That looks correct. Yeah, brown, black, green. All right. Perfect. Where are we going? So we're going to place that one between pin eight and pin seven on this 555 timer. So the two in the top uh, right corner. Okay. There. Um, and as you do that, I'll, I'll comment that on the first uh, 555 timer, we put a 1000 ohm resistor. So this one's a thousand times more resistive than uh, the prior one. And that's part of how we're going to get the different behavior in uh, this circuit versus um, the other circuit. So. Uh, you see Jenna there counting uh, counting the pins on which ones uh, are which. These will be the two on the top right, uh, which you'll be connecting. And, then... and Jess, when was the shift when you were like, nope, I'm not going to be an anesthesiologist? Um, so I shadowed one of my friend's dads was an anesthesiologist. I shadowed him and I, I thought it was cool still, but I think it was like when I got into computers that I was like, oh, okay, no, this yeah. is the thing. I love it. That's so interesting. And for me, I took a small business class in, um, in high school and then we ran the student store there, uh, which was where, you know, people bought like snacks and stuff. And, uh, I was on the team that was supposed to count the money every day. And I couldn't uh, couldn't pay attention long enough to ever finish counting a stack of, of bills. Oh no! I would always lose track, so I stopped oh. doing that. I actually I didn't do well in that class. <laughs> That's hilarious. Y'all, Ken says he's taking notes on how to do a Twitch channel. Oh my gosh, Ken, you have to launch a Twitch channel. And Loki, I may or may not have asked him if he will uh, teach me something here on my channel, and he may or may not have said yes. So, Amazing. So fun. Amazing. Um, let's jump into 2.1.6. Okay. Um, so that will be using a jumper, connect pin four to power. Okay. Connecting pin four to power. Alrighty. Every time I have on this headset, I feel like I'm talking to ATC, air traffic control. Maybe you are. Maybe, maybe a vacant special guest. And uh, Jess, speaking of ATC, Jess, maybe while I'm doing this one, if you can tell everyone about one of your fun hobbies that uh, is related to the ATC comment. Yeah, I've been working on getting my pilot's license. I took the written exam, but I still have all the flying left to do, which is the fun part. So, yeah. I love it. Awesome. And I see in chat as well that Ken mentioned that he will. Ah! You will join. Yay! Thank you, Ken. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah, th thanks, Ken, for joining. I see you You mentioned you'll have to run right now. Oh, bye, Ken. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for coming. Y'all, Ken is, Ken is amazing. Please look up Ken Washington. Read, read everything you can about him. Follow, you know, speaking engagements and everything. Um, and his career is fascinating. In He's going to be able to teach um, incredible things on Twitch. So that's, I'm so excited about that. Awesome, y'all. And I'm connecting pin four to power, correct? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. How's that? That looks great. Okay. Oh, yes. Bridges, but can, can swear. Awesome. You're just rolling through these, Jenna. We're, we're ready for the next one. I love it. So this is good. This is good. So 2.1.7, I just highlighted it in the instructions. Um, but you're going to go um, to your bin of capacitors, okay. um, and you're going to need to find a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Um, so maybe okay. check in the pamphlet Let's again. I know. I've got... That's what it looks like. Uh, they're a little uh, further down right in there. the frame. Yeah, so the one's labeled 103. All right. Okay. So I see that red squiggly line. Is there supposed to be a hyphen or no? I actually Googled this. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there's not a hyphen in between. Jordan, Jess, y'all know? Should y'all Google, Google really quickly? On microfarad? Yeah. Oh, um... That's a, that's a good question. I Googled um, it. I'm pretty sure there's not. I deleted the hyphen in a few of these. 
Oh, well, it's fixed now. Oh, perfect. But I wasn't sure. Y'all, I have to Google things all the time. Anybody else? Raise your hand if you have to Google all the time. Oh, I, I do too. How's this? I, that looks great. Yeah, Brent, raise his hand. Awesome. Well, let's use that to connect pin five okay. to ground. Awesome. Yeah, and for those watching, when we have to look up like the resistor color codes or look at like which in the the pamphlet which resistor is which, um, we have to do that every time. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, even even for everyone doing this that uh, none of us like have that memorized or anything. It's something we we look it up every single time we do it. And for anyone who's just now joining, Jordan and Jess, if y'all can kind of explain some of the, you know engineering fundamentals that are learned by building this project yeah um maybe uh well i'll start a lot of them is on basic like circuit design and you know the names of components it's something on this one we don't really go into like the the design of the circuits and like why they behave differently but uh we're going into like this is a resistor this is a jumper like what do each of the components do which helps at a, at a initial understanding to understand the building blocks that circuits are made with um, and how to, how to prototype, how to even experiment where, you know, we're trying things live and you guys are seeing that live. That, that's one of the main things on this. And we'd be really excited in future streams to hop into, you know, designing a circuit. Like how do you know which resistor to use? What, what resistance value? And that's some basic um, kind of back of the napkin math where it's, you know, multiplying, dividing, um, but saying like, oh, we want this amount of voltage. How do we get that with mm -hmm. the components we have available? Jess, was there anything you wanted to, to add on to that? Um, no, that, that's pretty good. You, you can make so much from all these, these pieces. So it's, it's fun to just play around. Awesome. And, and this is a project too that we can build on top of as far as building a, a basic computer here. But we actually in, in a future series could write some software that runs on this, this specific computer and we can calculate something. You'll, you'll see building a computer from scratch and actually being able to run some numbers on it. So Jenna is ahead of the game here. She uh, She's on 2.1.8 already. So let me catch up to I'm where she is. I'm pretty sure we have brown, black, red. Brown, black, red. That, is that uh, correct? Looks uh, that looks correct to me. So, because we're, we're looking for it's a thousand ohm, thousand -ohm resistor. resistor, and so I that. may or may not have cheated a little bit and looked in the booklet. And well, I wouldn't even call it cheating. It's what what everyone does is is oh, looking okay. up the values. So I feel um, like I was cheating instead of using the color code chart. Jenna just she's Jenna has picked up the tricks that. Uh, us, us full-time engineers do and she's joining the crew of full-time engineers which is just you know search for everything on google and look it up and, uh, and then do it <laughs> so, so we're connecting pin two to power yeah all right pin two oh so what happens when you have this little space here where two is um you can You'll have to go a little further on that big power column, the one that's going up down. Mm -hmm. um, but you can connect to any of those because they're all connected to that's each right. other. That's right. Yeah, as we add more and more, it'll get uh, mm. trickier and trickier to route everything. Um, How's that? But we'll the, that looks good. So that's uh, pin two and uh, power. That looks amazing. I still stand by this looking like a grasshopper. No, it when it was like when it was not plugged in, it really did. Oh no! Awesome. Anybody else? Was that just me? It looks like a, it looks like a grasshopper to me. We're getting pretty close to the next uh, test, which is exciting. Ooh! Um, so let's let's push through these next couple steps here. Um, you're going to need to find the push button switch. So that is uh, listed in the pamphlet as well, as far as what that looks like. Um, but it's a little switch. I uh, used some of those on the uh, the robot project. Jenna. I assume it is. Um, yeah, that momentary push button. Okay. Um, so you're going to find that. There's a tub with that and um, some of the other kind of like miscellaneous components. Here we go. I think I found it. Perfect. I believe it's this. 
That is correct. And you'll want to place that um, just next to the 555 timer. Okay. Similarly, bridging the gap between the two sides. And it is, um, I'm connecting I I anything in particular out of no, just anywhere? No, not, not yet. You're going you're gonna to connect after this to hook up the switch. Awesome. But and, go ahead. Go and ahead while I'm doing this, um, I did, you know, when you have a... I consider, even though we're a VC firm, I consider us like a startup as well. And um, we all wear many hats and I am our YouTube manager. <laughs> and so I actually just launched our YouTube channel and have put, I, I will be housing all of the videos there as well. Um, and I just put video one up just in case it, it falls off the Twitch, Twitch stream because I believe that they only stay up for a certain period of time. And so Britt or Hannah, if y'all can pop the link to the first video on YouTube, I'll have the second one up today as well. And then we'll, we'll, I'll try not to let it go longer than 24 hours without having those up. So y'all can watch them on YouTube as well. Okay. So anywhere over here on the, on the, on this side, you oh, said Jordan? You'll want to, you'll want to bridge the gap, just like how the five oh. five timer goes over the middle there. That looks good. How's that? Yeah, and just make sure it's secure. The switches like to. There we go. They're they're more of like real grasshoppers. They have to hop off sometimes. How's that? That looks good. That looks good. Uh, so that's step two point one point nine. Uh, we're gonna jump to two point one point ten. So okay. we're gonna start connecting the switch up to the rest of the circuit. So um, connect pin two, which uh, you're gonna use a jumper. Okay. And um, to, to the connect left side of uh, pin two on the left side. Oh, sorry, connect pin two to the left side of the switch. Um, and by left- uh, Is that like if we're looking no. at it like this? Uh, no, it's actually the other way. So if you could rotate it. Oh, um, so I'm gonna have to gonna move it. Um, I'm actually gonna add to the instructions for a little bit of clarity. Uh, yeah. um, but you're gonna wanna use a jumper to connect the left side of the switch. So that column, what's that right now, a vertical column there of the switch to pin two of the 555 timer. Okay. Let's see. All right side of the switch ground. Okay, one more time. So you'll want to go from pin two of the 555 timer. Okay. There to what is, uh, you see how the switch has um, those pins coming out of it? Yep. You'll want to connect uh, yeah. the other side of the jumper to the left side of the switch. But wouldn't that be the left side is right next to the timer, no? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. It is. So it's a pretty small jumper you're going to need there, just okay. like three or four. So the, okay. it's the pin because there's a, the right side of the switch which has two two pins coming out of it, and then the left side of the switch has two pins out, coming out of it. So you'll want to connect to that row coming out of the that pin. Okay, hold on a second. Where is my awesome? So I'm just organizing some of my things over here. And and just so that we, we know here on time, where is our stopping point gonna be? We'll go, our official stop times in, in four minutes, because we have the 45 minutes timed. I, I know we jumped on a, a little late, yeah. so we can uh, go a little longer. Um, let's, see. let's see. Yeah, so Jenny, you'll, you'll want to grab one of the, the, the switch. Um, there is that push button switch that you just placed on there. Okay. Uh, and um, you'll want to I'm find- I'm just not seeing a spot to the left of it. It's the the left set of pins. So what's coming out the bottom, there's, there's two be... pins. So, okay, because when I was looking that... over at it this way, it's this side, right? Uh, it's the, what would be on the top, like the top left. Up here? There. Um, no, uh, mate, on the left side, like, of it, but I wish you could jump through. Uh, Jordan, pop in here. I, okay, let me, let me hop over there. <laughs> Y'all, maybe I'm confused on which side that we're looking here. 
Jordan's popping in. Hey, Jordan. Oh, Hello. Hi, everyone. So we're going to grab... Um, here's a jumper. Here's a jumper. And what I was talking about, it's a little confusing with the switch, that the uh, there's a little pin. I'm not sure. Maybe oh, I'm underneath. Okay. There's the pin coming out yeah. of the switch there on the left. We're going to connect on to that. On the left that. or underneath? Um, it's, well... If you're looking at it this way, it'd be to the left. But then from yeah. here, it'd be right, you know... Yeah. On the bottom bottom left. Yeah, so it's going to go in that one oh. for everyone to see. Okay, that's... It's going to want a slightly shorter. I kept saying shorter. to the left and you were, when I held it the other way and you said no. Okay. Um, but yeah, you guys can see okay. the... Okay, that's the what I... Actually, focus. I got this. Okay. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> Y'all, that's what that's I was going to do anyway. I'm not a total, total ding-dong. Okay. Maybe we should clarify... On the instructions, which so it's connecting pin two to, and then it's gonna be this one right here. Let's see. Well, maybe to an engineer that was totally obvious, but to me now I'm going. It's it's the leg on the bottom. You may want a slightly uh, shorter Smaller, one. Yeah. It, was that just me, or are those instructions a little confusing? I can help uh, <laughs> clarify them. Okay. Maybe it's just me, the non-engineer on the stream. Uh, no, no, I was I was rewriting some of them live. Uh, okay, Hannah was cool. confused too. Super confused. Okay, good. Y'all are just saying that to make me feel better. I'm going, because I even held it the other way, and I was going, so the left here? Okay. All good. And then I started to question myself. I was like, I'm pretty sure I know I'm looking at the switch, but maybe I'm thinking a switch is something else. No, it's bad, bad instructions. Okay, here we go. How's that? That looks great. Okay, so if you're holding the the breadboard this way, it'd be the bottom the bottom left. If you're holding it this way, yes, in the row to the left. So that would be the row to the left. But then you also have to specify which leg, Jordan. You know? Yeah, we can update the instructions after this. Okay, perfect. Hey, man, uh, I'm a, I'm, I, I, I do, I do, the, the great thing is, is like, even with the instructions, that's, that's why we're doing this. We can, you know, improvise, change things, make sure it's super clear, especially, you know, someone as a non-engineer here, you know, I'm sure to someone who like Jess and Jordan, it's extremely obvious <laughs> where that should have gone. Um, but you know, especially when you're learning something new and you start questioning, oh, I want to guess, but at the same time, I could be guessing totally wrong. Thank y'all for clarifying this. No problem. It, it is confusing with the switches. There's a lot of ways to look at them. Um, it needs to have a similar thing to like the 555 timer where you can, you know, you have like a, a leg number. Yeah, they don't really have like a, a leg number or because they're, they're symmetric. So you can rotate them and everything and right. they, they still function the same. Um, we have maybe a time for one more step here. Awesome. Um, we're going to use uh, a jumper and uh, to uh, hopefully not have my vernacular only make sense to me that I'm going to use here the right side of the switch going to ground. So that would be this, if we're looking at it this way, just on the, on the, the, the right side of the breadboard. Um, no, um, no, it would be, the, it was the pin next to where the yellow pin is going. Uh, oh, okay. So if, if you go back to the original orientation, yeah, the, the, the instructions are written as if the board stays stays in this position here. And then that the gotcha. right-hand side has two pins on it. Oh, I got you. Okay, so when you were saying before, to the left side, but on, but I guess bottom left. Yes. That's probably the more clear way to say it. And and if the, and maybe specify in the instructions, like how, how you can have the board, um, the board orientation so that everyone yeah. knows if it's here it's going to be the bottom left 
for that for that last step. Um, cause left could be here if you're looking, you know, Yeah. or, but you also could think right and left is if it's facing this way, that's right. And that's left, you know? Yeah. Okay, cool. So sorry, one more time, there. I'm going so to the right leg, this leg here. Uh, that's correct. Perfect. Okay. And I'm connecting that to ground that to ground. All right. Sounds good. Whew. I totally start questioning myself. All right. Great job, team. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. I'm just going to go here. There we go. That looks great. How do we do? That that looks good. And um, for everyone's context, once we add in the um, the rest of the circuit, when we push that switch, that'll actually connect through those two jumpers. So when the pin's not switched, it's like it's a it's unplugged, and then pushing that switch will connect those two, which will help trigger the circuit. Yep. We'll finish uh, the final couple connections on this one uh, at the beginning of Thursday's stream, and then we'll test it out and then get on to building uh, circuit three. Awesome, y'all, and thank you so much for, for joining us, Jess and Jordan. Thank you for... Uh, teaching me how to build this alongside the 7th and 8th grade students in Robson County. Um, and y'all, we'll be live every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Check the chat. You have all the links that you need um, if you want to add us on Discord or, um, you know, social media, anything. Feel free to, to ask any questions that you have, um, and we'll try to answer them as quickly as we can. And we're excited for Thursday. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.